What makes up East Harlem is it's a mixture of different ethnicities. It's predominantly Hispanic, a lot of Afro-American, a lot of Asian, Chinese. I know there's a lot of people from the Middle East moving in as well. And it's been a multi-racial, multicultural neighborhood. District 8 happens to have the highest proportion of individuals in deep poverty uh, who are having the most trouble uh, affording buses and subways. This district, it sort of is a microcosm of all the problems of inequity in the city of New York and the deep issues that we're going to have to confront uh, to bring this under control. East Harlem is known to always throw a black party for no reason. The diversity. It is so great to see so many different races together and partaking in, in activities and so forth. As we do have a lot of people that are still in the lower socioeconomic rung, and while there's a lot of gentrification going on with middle class people having more money moving in, we still have, even in my complex, people who may be 10, 50 people living to an apartment because they're doing the things that immigrants did at, at the turn of the last century. Uh, you have uh, issues around uh, deep poverty, around lack of educational opportunity. And one of the things we began picking up was in addition to couldn't afford the rent, couldn't afford transportation. And we're actually, in large measure, not being able to get to a job, look for a new job. Uh, we also recognize that it, it really starts to confine you to one neighborhood. Public housing is in deep trouble. Uh, it has $17 billion in unmet capital needs, and that's why it's all these horror stories about elevators failing and mold. This is not accidental. It has to do with not providing the capital upkeep to maintain these units in habitable condition. So I think one of the things we're recognizing is that we have to take a much more comprehensive look at development here. And we've been arguing with the state and the city about the various incentives that are offered to developers. The major issue today that I see in East Harlem is the lack of low-income housing, co-ops, condominiums being built up. So they have to put like a certain amount for senior citizens, low income, and the majority is of market rates. The entire population in Salem can't fit into those criteria. And we're seeing a lot of diversity of people moving in, but it's young middle class. I would say the housing, put emphasis on that, because if you don't have a roof over your head, you can't do anything. That really has to be addressed. Places that were empty lots for years, or stood there, or were boarded up, not even torn down, just boarded up with the wood and everything. Why don't you take all of these properties and put low-income housing? It doesn't have to be NYCHA. It could still be low-income housing. I'm looking forward to a promise that they're going to fight for the area, you know, and fight for the city, because what's happening here is happening all over the city. Why can't we live in decency instead of scrounging from paycheck to paycheck? Stop building the shelter, stop putting the money there. That's just a band-aid, that's just a temporary fix. Start building the infrastructure for people so that it can go on from one generation to the next. There's gonna to have to be someone who really understands what's going on at the grassroots level, who has visited the bodegas, who's gone into the public housing, who sees how people are getting health care. So I think it's going to have to be a combination of in-depth understanding and willingness to stand up and fight for their constituents in a way that perhaps other districts never have to.